Here's a bubbly little tale of titanic terror. I call it Prairie Schooner. Mildred Jackson flung open the door of her house and squealed with joy. He stood on the paint-starred front porch, dressed resplendently in his captain's uniform, his face bronzed from forty years at sea, his eyes cold and squinting, his mouth grim, and his two suitcases beside him. Ezra, Ezra, why didn't you write me you were coming to visit? Oh, Ezra, it's so good to see you again. Hello, Millie. Got a place for your old sea dog brother to bunk down for a spell? Millie led Ezra into the parlor. There's always room for you here, Ezra. You know that. How long will you stay? Uh, just a spell, Millie. Just till I decide what I'm going to do next. You see, they took away me ship. They retired me. Retired? Oh, Ezra, I'm so sorry. Yep, me sailing days be over, Millie. I'm a landlubber now. Well, where do I stow me gear? That was how Ezra Jackson came to live with his sister Mildred. At first, Millie was very happy to have him. After all, she was an old maid, and Ezra was company. But as time went on, Ezra began to do strange things. Ezra, what are you looking at through your spyglass? Huh? I said, what are you looking at with your spyglass? N nothing, Millie. I was just uh, watching that ship on the horizon. Sh ship? But, <laughs> Ezra, this is Kansas. There aren't any ships on the horizon. There, there isn't any water for hundreds of miles. One night, Millie was roused out of a sound sleep by heavy paws shaking her roughly. What, what, what's wrong, Ezra? What is it? Get up, ye lazy swab! You're late for your watch, and if ye ever do this again, I'll have ye thrown in the brig! From that night on, Millie was forced to stand watch. She had to move through the halls of the old house from 2 a.m. to dawn, carrying a lantern and shouting, Louder, ye blithering idiot! Louder! Eight bells and all's well! It was obvious to poor Millie that her older brother was ill, mentally ill. The shock of being retired had been too much for him. His mind had snapped. He fancied himself at sea again, the house, his ship, and she, his crew. Ye call this clean! I want this deck scrubbed till I can see me reflection, understand? Yes, Ezra. Don't Ezra me! Tis Captain Jackson, remember that! Now get to work, ye bilge rat! Yes, Captain Jackson. Millie had been a school teacher in her younger years. She'd worked hard and managed to save a small amount of money. She'd used part of it to buy the house she now lived in. The rest she'd invested wisely, and she'd been able to live comfortably. But with Ezra's arrival, her meager income was not enough. Pah! Ye call this food! Ye dare to feed this slop to your cotton! Ye ought to be strung up and given ten lashes! It's the, it's the best we can afford, Ezra. Please try to understand. I understand one thing, ye galley pig. Either the food improves, or tis irons for ye! And tis Captain Jackson, ye hear? <laughs> yes, Captain Jackson. So Millie was forced to earn extra money to augment the small income she'd arrived from her investments. She had to take in washing. Where in blazes are ye, ye sloppy sea cook? I'm in the cellar, Captain. I'm I'm doing the ship's laundry. Ezra came down the cellar stairs, screaming, You're below, ye dumb landlubber! Not in the cellar! Below! Y yes, Captain, I'm b below. Ezra stood in the center of the cellar floor, staring about him with wide, gleaming eyes. Perfect! Perfect! Just the place for me quarters! Here, ye! Send for the ship's carpenters, the ship fitters! Yes, Captain. Millie was helpless. She had no other choice except, perhaps, to have Ezra put away. She called in a carpenter, a plumber. Avast up there! Come below! Please, gentlemen, remember, humor him. He he's quite harmless. Of course, Miss Jackson. We understand, Miss Jackson. Ezra stormed about in the cellar, shouting out his orders. Rip out those windows, close them up, put up false walls, mahogany paneled walls, sit in portholes, real portholes that open. Yes, Mr. Jackson. 
Captain Jackson! Put ocean scenes behind the portholes. Hang ship's lanterns around. Put in a bunk, a galley, a head. Make everything authentic. This is me ship. Uh, yes, Captain. And poor Millie withdrew her life savings from her investments to pay for this nonsense. Four thousand nine hundred and ninety five thousand dollars. Here you are, Mr. Gunner. Thank you, ma'am. I hope your brother is happy with the job we did. Below, in his ship's quarters, Captain Jackson bellowed. Stand by to cast off! Engine room, full speed astern! All hands, man your stations! On the double! Millie came below, carrying her laundry basket filled with the wash she'd been taking in. What in blazes are ye doing down here with that? I've got to do the uh, ship's laundry, Captain. I've... Ezra struck out savagely. Oh! Ye'll do the laundry on deck, ye scullion beggar! Get out of me quarters! With her investments wiped out and the income from them gone, Millie had to take in more wash than she could handle in order to meet expenses, and Ezra's abuse became worse and worse. Scrub out that head, ye folks old drudge! <laughs> yes, Captain. Poor Millie would escape every chance she could get and lock herself in the upstairs bathroom in order to do the wash in the tub. And as she scrubbed, she would listen to Ezra's ranting and raving. Is the helm! Give her more rudder! Steady as ye go! Hard a port! Steady! Steady so! <laughs> One hot summer's day, Ezra stood at the open porthole, shouting out at the seascape scene beyond. Ahoy! Ahoy there! Ship ahoy! Stand fast! Stand by! While upstairs, directly overhead in the bathroom, Millie panted over a load of wash. The hot water running into the tub over the soaking clothes sent up clouds of steam, which filled the locked bathroom. Suddenly, Millie clutched the excruciating pain in her chest, toppling over. <coughs> and as her heart failed and as her life faded with it, the boiling water overflowed the tub, pooling around her prostrate body, singing through the bathroom floor. In his cellar ship's quarters, Captain Jackson listened as the water, leaking down from the overflowing bathtub above, filled the space between the false mahogany-paneled walls and the foundation of the house. Stormy seas tonight! Button down the hatches! We're in for a blow! Suddenly the water began to pour through the open portholes. All hands! All hands! We're taking on water! Man the bilge pumps! Secure the swell works! The cellar filled with steam. Captain Jackson staggered to the portholes, slammed them shut. The pressure of the water crumbled the panel walls. Abandon ship! We're sinking! Slowly the water rose in the cellar, boiling, scalding, blistering Ezra's aged body, but he stubbornly stood fast. Uh, Abandon ship! The cotton must remain! Until the rising hot water reached his chin, his neck, poured into his mouth and stewed his tongue, his throat his lungs. <laughs> yep, kiddies, that's my morbid marine offering. Ezra finally ended up in hot water. <laughs> this is the first case on record, by the way, of a captain going down with his ship in the middle of a Kansas prairie in a cellar. <laughs> And now, I'll turn you over to the Crypt Keeper, who is waiting to wind up my reek rag. Remember, if you're a fan and an addict, join the EC Fan Addict Club. <laughs> Bye now.